Hello, my name is Tony Beers, and this is Movie Greens. Hello everybody, Jay here and, and Russell. And in today's classic movie review, we are going to be reviewing the classic movie from 1989, Tim Burton's Batman. Batman. <laughs> this movie stars Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson. And Kim Basinger as well. Yes. Okay, basically, one cool thing I have to say I experienced in this movie was for the first time I fully understood a lot of plot points in the movie and that's why I'll give the rundown of the plot. Essentially, first of all, there's several things going on. The city is, wants to celebrate its 200th birthday but they're in a major, uh, they're in major debt so they really can't afford to. On top of that, <clears throat> um, I believe, um, the city, uh, the city is trying to go after a major crime lord played by Jack Palance, and um, what makes it harder for them to deal with the crime lord is that one of their one of their top cops on the force is kind of being uh, he's he's in the hands of the crime lord. Isn't that Eckhart? Yes, and thank you. And um, basically, Nick uh, Jack Napier, who was played by Jack Nicholson, and Napier, by the way, being a nod to Alan Napier, who played uh, Alfred on the 1966 Batman. Essentially, um, he kind of wants control of the crime syndicate, and at the same time, he's also trying to take the take the girl away from from his boss. And his boss knows this, and just like Eckhart, he wants Napier gone. So he sends um, Napier and some of his cronies into this uh, warehouse where he's hoping that uh, he's going to get knocked off. Napier realizes pretty soon on that he's been set up. That's when Batman shows up, of course, after he's been introduced earlier on in the movie. And, um, and of course, after a fight... Uh, Napier falls into the chemicals that would later transform him into the Clown Prince of Crime. <laughs> and, um, and basically from there the movie is about him, first of all, taking out uh, his, uh, his boss, then basically taking over all the criminals in Gotham City, and pretty much trying to run Gotham City, and also trying to steal, steal the girl, uh, Vic, Vic, Vicky Vale, from, oh, played by Kim Basinger, from Bruce Wayne. Let's hear some uh, news, some, what do you think from the, about all this, Jay? Well, to be perfectly truthful, I mean, I've seen bits and pieces of this through the years, but this is actually the first time I've actually sat through and actually watched the whole movie. And actually, same thing with Batman Returns, which we'll be reviewing soon as well, so I'll get to watch it. It's another movie that I've seen bits and pieces of through the years, but I don't believe I've seen the full thing. But we'll get to that in our next review. But one of the things I really like is the Batmobile. Like, it has this shield armor on it that you don't see a lot. That was really cool, how it shielded itself off. I really like the Joker's helicopter. That was really cool. And the boats he had. He's like, my balloons. What? They cut my balloons off. Oh, and the Batplane was really cool. I don't, I kind of find this kind of interesting where he takes the bat Batplane through the clouds. And then for a second, he, he the, it's like a full moon. And the, it makes the Bat symbol. And then it just kind of drops. Of course, it was intentional. It was intentional, it was funny, but I don't know if it was really needed or not. It was kind of just there. Hey, it's fan service. You can't knock fan service, especially at a moment like that. Yeah. Sorry, those are my balloons. He stole my balloons! Why didn't anyone tell me I had one of those things? That was good. I really like Jack Nicholson as a Joker. I think he did a really well job, how, how he was really crazy and you know, psychotic. I consider Nicholson a dark Silver Age Joker, essentially. I mean, he basically did a lot of what you'd see Caesar Romero doing, but in a much darker way. Yeah. When I first saw this movie, I was seven years old. I was terrified by half of it, at least. And I just love it now. It, it's, it's great. And like I said, I understood several plot points for the, points for the very first time this go-around. I was like, 
Oh, okay, now I get this. All right, yeah, this is good. I, I like this a lot. Um, I that there were a few things, one or two things that I had issues with. I'm sure everyone's seen the thing, the pot, the pot hole online where they mention how is it Joker is right in the middle of, uh, of of the street praying down, and the co and the cops don't arrest him. You know, it's kind of like obvious. Second thing, um, and I just this is just more of a funny thing. You see Batman and Vicky Vale running out of the Batmobile right in the middle of, of the city into into a uh, an alley, and you're thinking. People watching this guy dressed like uh, just like a bad dashing with his gun to the middle of an alley. It's actually just kind of funny. It's like, oh come on, but it, it's funny still. Um, one thing Jay brought up while we were watching the movie, and I have to give him credit for this. He said that he sees Michael Keaton's Batman as a very good um, evolution from the um, fr from Adam West into Kevin Conroy and then Christian Bale, which I do have to agree with. Um, and one thing I, I've actually thought about before with this Batman movie, I think the Batman movies, the 89 one and the 91, nine, bleh, 91 one, are both excellent time capsule pieces. I think Michael Keaton basically represents the yuppie at the time the movie was coming up. They were, by the, the end of the 80s, the, the yuppies were confused. They didn't know who they were, what they wanted or anything. And Michael Keaton really seems to symbolize all those things in, the, in this movie. And it's just, I, maybe Tim Burton did it intentionally, maybe he didn't, but I think it's so well done how it's done like a perfect time capsule piece for that. I have two issues with this movie. Okay. First of all, Harvey Dent played by... Billy D. Williams. Billy D. Williams, first of all, being African American. When the comic eventually Harvey Dent becomes Two Face, as we all know, he is white. But then later on, we see that as Jamie Foxx as Electro, so, you know, maybe it was a nod to that. There could be a lot of other things. And the other thing, too, is Joker had these balloons that were way high up in the sky, and then he releases this gas to try to not kill these people. How's that even possible? You're in the open atmosphere of, you know, all, of outside. That That's hard to do. I don't see how that'd be a real, realistically done. I know it's a comic, and I know it's supposed to be fun. I just don't see it being realistic, because usually either wind would come in and blow it away, or even if it, it will just dip it, dissipate in the air. So I, that's kind of interesting. Unless it's a very heavy guess, it would... That would be the only way I could see it, you know, oh, working. Okay. But it didn't seem like a very heavy gas in this situation. Kind of like how pesticides are a heavy form of gas and moisture. That might have been a way to work around it. I don't know, maybe you guys know something I don't about this gas that he made. But, overall, it was a very well done movie. Oh, yeah. Especially for the time and everything. I mean, they did an amazing job considering how comics and the... This is one of the first comic-based movies, you know, after Superman, and to pull it off the way they did, very well done for the time, very well done. Oh, the, uh, Jack, the, the, the head crime lord was, was named Grissom, and that was played by Jack Clance, like I said. But, yes. Yes. So, any final thoughts? Uh, not really, I mean, I, I, I'm get, I mean, despite the plot holes, I'm gonna give this movie an A, simply because I mean, I'm not saying it was perfect, but for what was being done at the time, and considering from what I heard, Tim Burton doesn't even like the character of Batman per se. He just thinks the robes are cooler, and yeah, I'll give him the robes are awesome. I'm going to give it an, an A, considering all that was put into it, despite, you know, what flaws there were. I can let them slide. Yeah, I think I'll give it an A as well, because I really liked my life. So the first time watching it in its entirety was really well done. It would definitely be something I'd watch again. It's, very, it's a good timepiece to watch with your friends or family. It was really well done for its time. And I guess that's about it. Signing off, everybody. Toxic Pop has a new Facebook page. Like it to see pictures and keep informed about our upcoming events and videos. A link is in the description. Go to www.facebook.com slash Toxic Pop 1.